up, we have another deadly um, person to talk to us today. So if you want to introduce yourself, maybe tell us who you are, where you're from and, and what you currently do. Sure. Um, yeah, my name's Cameron, Cameron Manning. Uh, I'm a Gomorrah man. I was born and raised in Newcastle on Wobbacal country. Um, and I currently live in Western Sydney um, on Durham country. And I am a out-of-home care caseworker with Narang Barong Aboriginal Corporation. And I've been there um, since May of this year. Cool. Um, so how did you get to, I guess, where you are today or what you're doing today? Um, well, I got into um, sort of the, the work and the, the life I'm, I'm leading at the moment through, um, through I think, learning from past mistakes, learning from failures, um, learning from experiences. So I, um, after, after I finished high school, uh, it was 2010, I, um, I went straight to university. Um, I wasn't sure of what I was doing like many young people. I was um, really uh, not really um, had, had a very good direction in regards to where I wanted to go for the future, my future career um, and where I wanted to be um, in five, 10, 20 years. I didn't, didn't have any, any long-term plans. So I just went to university, um, <clears throat> ended up uh, dropping out quite, quite early. Um, and from there, I um, was, was quite lost, felt, uh, was um, feeling quite overwhelmed with it all. Um, had a lot of um, mental health issues at the time. And it sort of took me um, quite a while to get back into um, finding out and, and sort of contemplating and thinking about where I wanted to go. So um, from there, about a year and a half later, I ended up um, gaining a traineeship in youth work in Western Sydney. So I moved to Sydney um, with family um, and ended up uh, working and completing a Cert for in community services with that. So that really gave me, I guess, a um, first um, step in the direction of where I, where I, ended, I ended up being today um, is getting that, getting that initial work experience and um, getting into, that, into the area where um, I, I wanted to be. Um, before that, I was sort of I was doing social work at university and I was um, not really happy with it. I wanted to be have some hands-on experience. So to get into that really, really helped me. Um, and then from there, I've, um, I've just done further studies. I went, ended up going back to university. I'm um, not, not far off finishing at the moment. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been a quite a, quite a long journey. Um, along that time as well, um, I've had many, many life changes, changes of, um, of where I've lived. I've also become a dad. So I've had to, had to grow up in that, in that time. So I think the biggest, the biggest sort of, um, I guess, motivator and, um, and driver for change was um, life experience itself and just um, making, changing my mindset around um, from, from failing and, and learning from that failure to actually um, succeeding and finding things that I'm, I'm good at and then and persevering with it even when it gets hard. So I found that when I was, when I was younger, I would, if something became hard, I would give up quite easily. I would just say, put it in the too hard basket, say, you know, this isn't for me and then give up and move on to the next thing instead of persevering with it and, and seeing it as part of the process that it's just a challenge, just a, just a roadblock along the way. Um, whereas I feel like now um, being a, a little bit older, um, a little bit wiser in regards to um, those things, I feel like I, if, if I do face challenges now, I'm more likely to persevere with it and um, sort of look at it in a different way, um, and then c continue instead of um, and instead of giving up. So, yeah, that's that's sort of my journey. I guess um, within that, there's a good message around things don't have to really go the way they're they're expected to, or or um, they might be viewed by everyone. I think um, there's this massive expectation of you finish school and then you go to uni. Um, but I think you know if you want to go in travel, explore, maybe work in a different field first and, like you said, get some experience um, and then go to university. It's also, um, you know, about your own path and your own sort of journey, which is important too. Um, <clears throat> that's good. But so can you recall maybe a tough time um, where maybe you struggled a little bit and then what was your process to sort of get back on top of things, um, I guess, mentally? Yeah. Um, so um, the biggest one for me over the last couple of years would be my um, journey with the Indigenous Marathon Project. 
So um, the Indigenous Marathon Project was started in uh, 2010 by the um, Australian marathoner Rob DiCostella. So at that, um, he originally took four young Indigenous men over to uh, New York in 2010 to do the New York Marathon. And they were the first Indigenous people to complete that marathon. <clears throat> and from there, the program's grown. So there was started off with four, um, four graduates of the program and now we're up to 109. So I'm I'm the number ninety eight of the of um the, the graduates. So um to be selected um each year there's a squad selected. So to be selected you just need to be between the ages of eighteen and thirty, um and you don't need any any fitness experience or or anything like that. It's more so around your your purpose, your drive, um and where you want to sort of go go with your life and and in the future and sort of inspiring people to be the best version of themselves. So um, for me, I, um, I originally tried out for the program in 2017 um, and I didn't really have much knowledge about it. I sort of had a little bit of, little bit of understanding of what it was about, but I didn't know too much about it. And I didn't go in there with too many expectations. So um, the, the, tr the trialing process is um, each man has to do five kilometre run and each woman has to do a three kilometre run plus an interview with the coach. So I, I did that. Um, and I was unsuccessful um, in getting in, but the feedback I received was that I had a lot of potential and that they really wanted me to come back the next year and give it a go and not give up. So um, I, I did that. Um, and then <clears throat> it wasn't for another couple more years after that. So it took me four, four times to get in. So I ended up getting in in 2020 last year. Um, and that was, yeah, that was really, um, like really sort of, um a, a really good good thing something that motivated me um and, and pushed me to to continue the fact that I didn't get in, in those other years um and I, I definitely had thoughts along that along that way of should I get should I continue to 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 try and make it um or should I just stop because it looks like it's not working so instead of um instead of doing that um I just thought no you know I've got I've got more years to to try out um you know, just keep give, just keep keep putting a, a one foot forward in front of the other, and just give it a go. So I eventually got in, um, and when we got when I got selected, um, the COVID restrictions had started. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, each year um, the squad gets taken to New York. We do a, a, some trial runs throughout the year um, at Gold Coast, Canberra, Alice Springs, and Sydney, um, and then we go to New York in November. So basically, those plans got got canned because of the, the COVID restrictions. So um, it was quite tough mentally to to have that motivation every day to train. So we get given training programs and we have to train. Um, at times we're training six, seven days a week running and I'd never done that before. So I had a lot of um, sort of back and forth in my head around is my body going to keep up, going to be able to, to take this? Is um, what's my motivation to doing it? That's where a lot of us in, in our squad really struggled at times during the year was because um, – our, our motivation for doing it wasn't there like the other years. Everyone else was like, yeah, we're going to go to New York and this is going to be a great experience where for us, we didn't up until uh, about a month out from, from our marathon, which we did in our Springs, we were, um, yeah, there was no plan of what, what we were going to do. So um, that, I found that really mentally, mentally tough um, and something that I constantly thought about, particularly while I was running. I'm like, you know, just, just keep going, keep going. Um, but there was always that, that thought in the back of the mind was, oh, what am I doing this for? Like, where am I get, am I going to actually be able to, to, to even run a marathon with my other, um, squad members who are from, uh, across the country. So, um, that's something that, um, I really had to sort of look within myself for that internal motivation and that drive to, to succeed and to, to push forward with it. Um, so for me, it was around reaching out to other people, um, having people that, I could I could speak with about about um, my experiences um, like mentally as well as sort of um, physically the physical side of things, um, but I definitely found the mental side of things a lot harder than the physical. The physical once we I got into a routine with that it was really really good and, and it was um, something that I could get into a really strong routine with. But the mental side of things was quite tough. So um, definitely reaching out to people, um, reaching out to my coach um, and reaching out to people in my squad really helped. Um, but yeah, we got, it, it really, it all came together for, for us and we um, we got to run um, Midnight Marathon in Alice Springs 
on the 31st of October of last year. So um, yeah, that was a really good experience. Um, got got welcomed by the by the local mob there. Um, and yeah, we started at 10 o'clock at night, ran through to the next day. So past midnight, I finished it just after 2 a.m. Um, and yeah, it was just a really great atmosphere. We had supporters there with us. We had, we had I think about 40 or 50 people running. Um, that's including the, the 12 of us who were there from our squad. Um, and yeah, it was just, yeah, really, really good. Um, one of the best moments for me was our last um, our finisher, um, Mac, who was a member of our squad. She finished it. Um, I think it was around 6 a.m. when the sun was coming up. So a few of our squad members ran the last uh, 500 metres to a kilometre with her and finished that um, finished that with her, as well as her brother finished that with her, who was a member of the squad a few years ago. So he's a IMP grad as well. So, yeah, that was just really, really good. Um, and I definitely, um, yeah, definitely recommend that for, for any young person um, who, who wants to be involved in something that's really positive. And, and once once... To, once you've completed that, you have that ongoing support from the Indigenous Marathon Foundation. That's what I've, I've found um, to be really helpful to me is that ongoing. It's not like you finish and then that's it. We also we have um, we keep in contact with with other members of our of our squads as well as um as the staff there. Um, so one of my um one of my squad members has actually become a staff member of the Marathon Foundation. So I'm constantly in contact with him and we're we're constantly supported ongoing. Um, through through our, our work so I can we can apply for grants um, for for work projects or, or sort of community work of whatever we want to do whether it be running events or even gaining some um, further education with um, where we want to go um, with working in the community or partnering with other organizations to um, to deliver programs so yeah it's been been a really good experience and I found <clears throat> just um, the main the main message I, I got from it was to not focus on the the um, the, the long term so much. Just focus on each day and putting um, putting that effort in each day and making sure that you're ticking all the boxes of looking after yourself, but also um, looking looking towards the goal as a as a sort of a wider a larger a larger thing, but not becoming too focused on just staying staying grounded, I guess. Absolutely, brother. I really like that message too. Like, um, you know, being present um, to achieve the future is, I think, you know, the, the best message that you know that comes out. Like you said, but um, you know, you've said that running the IMP stuff has been a massive part of your life the past few years. Um, you know, your journey through uni and all that kind of stuff, and, and work as well now. But um. What's your escape, brother? Do you have a do you have something you do to outside of those things? It could even be the running as well. Um, but you know, do you have another escape or event um, for your own sort of own mental health? Yeah, um, yeah, I have I have a few. So um, because I've been in, in, in lockdown for quite a while, I've had to sort of um, to get into a few few different things with all that extra time on, on, on my hands. Um, so. I've really got into reading. So I, I, I'm constantly reading different books. Um, I'm usually reading a couple of books at a time. Um, usually one that's of interest to me. So something about, I'm really interested in sports. So usually an autobiography or, or a, um, a sort of a story around a, a sports person or a sporting event. Um, <clears throat> and then as well as that, I'm also reading books around um, mind management and books around sort of self-improvement and, and, and looking inward to um, sort of change your life in more of a, a positive way. So I really enjoy doing that. Um, generally, generally throughout the day, I'll have a read and then at night before I go to bed, I read, which I, I find really helps me as well as that um, journaling. So I'm trying to make a conscious effort each day to, to journal um, and, and sort of channel how I'm feeling and record sort of the, the events of the day as well as um, write down three things that I'm grateful for. So that's a, something I've picked up from from reading and from learn and from listening to podcasts. That's another thing I do. I like I enjoy listening to podcasts. So I, each day I'll write just just three simple things down that don't have to be complicated, and just um, making sure that that's a that's a positive thing that I get done every single day. Yeah. Um, and once that's sort of completed, I I've, I I can look back, which is what I've done over the last few days is look back to my journal entries from say this, the beginning of the lockdown, which was about three months ago, looking at my mindset then um, and then looking at it now. 
so I can see sort of changes and developments over that time, which is really good because if I didn't write that down, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't remember it. It wouldn't be there. Whereas when I've once I've got all that all of that down, I can look at that now. I can look at that, that in like ten years time and say this is how I was feeling at this time, and this is how the strategies I used. So that's what I mainly get from it is what strategies did I use at the time when I wasn't feeling feeling very well mentally or feeling um, a bit flat. How did I overcome that? Um, so that's um, one of the one of the big things that I've I've done, um, and also just um, spending time with my kids as well. So um, just getting out. If I'm I work from home as well, so um, to have a break, I'll just go outside out in the backyard and play play cricket or, or kick a soccer ball around with my kids and, and my my dogs as well. I've got two dogs, so um, yeah, just just doing something that is um, that's not. I don't know, too, too consuming, but something that um, is enjoyable, especially being outdoors. Um, I really, I really like being outside and spending time in nature or spending time out in the sun. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things I really love about that brother is that all those things that you've named, they're really simple. They're really super simple. Like you say, they're not super consuming. There's, they're all things that you can do in a, in a, in a limited space because like you say you've been doing these things in lockdown and for people out there that know the situation um whether first hand or through the news like lockdown has been crazy for people in new south wales especially in sydney um but the key that you know the key point that you make out of all of that that simplicity is the conscious effort part um which i think is is definitely the key to those those things is making the conscious effort to do it um but in saying that as well, brother, you know, you, you've shared some really awesome um, experiences and, and knowledge. Is there stuff, is this out of all that, you know, what sort of advice would you pass on to someone that may be in a similar situation or, um, or feel like, you know, they're, they're struggling a little bit at the moment? Yeah, um, I, think, I think the main things are to, to recognise and fully acknowledge where you're at at the present time. So a really big thing is to write things down. So record exactly how you're feeling, exactly how, um, how you've got to that place, I think. Looking, looking back, maybe not too far, maybe about a week, a couple of weeks, a month. Just see how you've got to the point where you're at. Um, and then reaching, just reaching out for help. Um, whoever, if there's no one around you, um, picking up the phone, calling, calling family, calling friends. Um, and, and just making sure that you have a, a good, solid, solid plan of, um, of a, a way to move forward. So I think the, the worst thing you can do is get stuck in the same place. Um, I've had to learn that firsthand is um, it's okay to, to have bad days. It's okay to, to have days where you're, you're not feeling motivated, you're not feeling as strong or as, um, as resilient as you do on other days. And that's okay because um, that's just all, all, all part of the journey. There's always going to be bumps along the road. So um, just making sure that when you, when you do feel, feel that you need to reach out, just making sure that you do. I know for me as a, as a young person, so as, as a teenager, I didn't, um, I didn't reach out to anyone. I was the type of person just to isolate myself. Mm. So I would um, sort of lock myself away from the world and not, and not talk to anyone. Um, and I can see now with, um, with experience and, um, and a bit more um, understanding on the, on the issue, I can see that that's yeah, something that doesn't, doesn't work and, and only adds to um, those negative, negative feelings. Um, so the main thing I think is, is reaching out, recording how you're feeling and then not, not giving up. Always making sure you put one foot in front of the other and, um, and yeah, standing up. Despite how you know, despite how hard hard things may be, I know at the moment a lot of people are struggling um, with with mental health, and it's a really really big issue. Um, but there's always, especially in in today's um, society, there's always um, always avenues to go down that that will help you. So just not being afraid of that um, and reaching out when you need to. Love it, brother. Awesome advice. Cool. Um... <clears throat> But yeah, I think the things that you're doing sort of um, in your career stuff, but also in your personal stuff is um, really inspiring to not just a lot of young people, but also, um, you know, people of all ages. So 
Yeah, I think we're, we're done today with that interview, but um, keep plugging away at what you're doing and I look forward to see what, what's next for, for you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your time too, brother. Appreciate that. All good.